Hello, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to, to this part of the Cinematic Vermouth today. Uh, it's, it's a pre-recorded session with Adriana Vila Guevara. We are extremely excited to, to be with Adriana today. Uh, Adriana is a Venezuelan filmmaker, artist and anthropologist based in Barcelona. Her work moves between the realms of confessional ethnographic studies and film experimentation using different formats, video, Super 8, 16 mil, and exhibition forms, projection, performance, and installation. And, and she covers so much that we're gonna try to, you know, in 30 minutes, you know, we chat, cover the, the films that you have in the program, which is just uh, the tip of the iceberg uh, to, to, to get to know more the work of, of Adriana. Welcome, uh, Adriana. Pleasure. How are you? How are you? What are you? Cinematic. Great. Thank you very much. What a, lovely, what a lovely setting you have. Where are you today? <laughs> yes, this is my little lab. You can see. Oh, wow. Well, it's my lab and also my studio. So here I spend a good amount of time during the day and night. <laughs> my little dark room also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Great. We, 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 we like to, to start, Nora, from, from the beginning. We like to start from the start. And maybe uh, for those not so aware with, with your work, maybe let us know a little bit, Adriana, how you get into, into cinema, into moving image. Uh, you're a trained uh, anthropologist. What, what came first, anthropology movies, same time simultaneously? How was that process of uh, approaching uh, uh, moving pictures, moving image? Well, it was... Um... It wasn't uh, a goal itself, no. It was, um, I started actually in, in literature, even before I started in, in science, and then I got to, into literature. I think it, it was also a, a wanting to absorb many things at the same time. And uh, while I was studying anthropology in, in, in Barcelona after doing um humanities humanities um here i i was studying actually in the building right in front of uh, ccsb um, and uh, the contemporary uh, center <laughs> for contemporary yeah. arts barcelona, contemporary yeah. barcelona. Yeah. and um it was the moment when uh, the uh, owl eccentric started and this was uh, this was really um, I think the turning point, or actually what absorbed me, uh, was to to have the opportunity to start to assist to these courses uh, dedicated to experimental cinema, uh, but profoundly. No, it was a continuous course, so it wasn't just like one little course, but a continuous course. So it actually became a sort of master in experimental cinema and I I connected immediately you know it was um, I had also uh, a background uh, related uh, to um, performative arts and I was doing a bit of uh, contemporary uh, dance in Venezuela and also very uh, related also to poetry slams and uh, also to even um, other artistic environments and um, it was all uh, actually getting together, you know, in, in experimental cinema. It was like finding their uh, a, the poetic approach uh, to what was being able also to be captured, but also performed and related to the arts in general. Uh, when I was I was I was doing this, I inherited uh, these a lot of uh, Super 8 and 60 millimeter uh, films and also some projectors and. From from that, I I suddenly had in my hands all these all this material and and um, being able to relate with these uh, gazes and also with uh, these lives unknown lives. Uh, so it was it was pretty anthropological on one side and on another side it was the the materiality of cinema and uh, and connecting with with that in my hands and, and being able to uh, project uh, and also connect with the instruments you know, itself. And so that started that started a path that connected also with uh, who was uh, my companion during a, a long period of time and with whom I actually started all this, uh, that was uh, Luis Macia. And we started our, our first piece that was an expanded, um, 
whole movie uh, piece uh, that took us around the world and uh, and made me also connect with other filmmakers, with other uh, people working, exploring all these uh, this material and th these ways of, of making film. For me, it was uh, it was the school. No, it was actually that was the school. It was um, and getting to know like all these mothers and fathers of experimental cinema, and and getting to show them what I was just starting to do, and um, and have all these feedbacks and exchanges and discussions, and and also it was uh, related to what I was also interested in um, uh, in anthropology. Uh, because it is the context, you know, of, of what, and the people also behind these films. Uh, I'm very interested in that and in, in what's going on also behind, no? And so that was also a way of learning uh, a lot. And then coming back here and wanting to share that, you know? So it was, that was the beginning also of Crater Lab, the idea of um, opening a little space to uh, share what uh, we had been learning, um, because it started with found footage, but then we went into filming and then we went into processing and then from black and white processing into color processing and then into copying and then into optical printing. And then you now it's like one thing uh, <laughs> took us to a next step because it also like working with this, uh, I, I don't feel like uh, finding uh, one language and then stick it, sticking into that language. No, it's it's more like um, wanting all, always to get out of the comfort zone and to uh, learn something new. And so that was taking me all the time into new techniques or into new uh, forms and and always like sort of work in progress. You know, uh, with each each piece was a new exploration. And uh, yeah, so this was this was mainly the beginning. I don't know if it was totally, totally, and it's great okay. to see that uh, those connections with people, with places, with you know specific oh. programs like. Yeah. It's, it's easy to get carried on with when you start discovering how how people made films before the digital era, um, but I mean your origins are there, but your career has gone now for a few years, and you have made a number of pieces. You have a couple, make a couple of feature films. The last one was Belen. Uh, we would like to ask you, how how do you choose the the subject of your films? How you get to 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 determine and to to have clear what you want to say in your films? Well, Belen was actually my 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 first and my my only feature film, <laughs> and uh, it it's uh, I mentioned it because it was so complex. Um, to to I think that was another school, no, but especially into the. Um, the industrial forms of making film and uh, accessing also to um, um, structures and to uh, resources and to working with, uh, with, with a lot more people. And, and uh, um, so that was a, a particular school. And I, after I finished it, I was so exhausted that I, I decided I wanted to get back into making my, my little films that actually I can, I can hold them in my hand. Now. Um, but I, the subject of, of Belen and, uh, came through uh, my uh, master's in anthropology that I did, um, that focused on uh, memory and re representation in Afro-Venezuelan um, identity, and particularly with this group of women drummers, um, where Belen was the, one of the main uh, representations of these empowered uh, women. This was like a very strong subject and it was um, a film, <clears throat> a very particular film in what I have been actually doing in my, in my creative um, field because this was a, a very engaged film and uh, with, uh, that I took with a lot of responsibility because it was related to all this um, uh, engagement also with the people behind the film. The subject of my other films, um, sort of uh, pop, pop up, you know? Uh, yeah. And depending on what uh, maybe I'm reading or maybe just what I'm looking at, you know, or what uh, can 
can come into my life as a sort of a revelation or just a surprise or um, um, or a question, no? So they, they, they are all coming from different places and it does have to do with my position uh, towards the world. No, it does have to do uh, with how I am sitting here and uh, relating no? and um, how I relate with the world. I, I, it puts me in place where I am sensible to what is going on around me or, or not, <laughs> not always, no, but um, depending on that, I receive, you know, it's, it's sort of like, uh, am, I, am I able to, to receive uh, this or that? And depending on how it comes in front, then I, then I take it. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. I, and and since we have uh, at the end of these two pieces, we, we which feel like you know like a wee tapa, like a wee aperitif to to you know the vast of your of your work and how deep and 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 and, and complex and rich it is, we we gave the audience the chance to to approach your work with with two short films back then, in the tropical vision. Um, somehow they they feel like uh, both have an element of playfulness, like mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, to small experiments, uh, small beautiful experiments, one kind of expanding to nature motifs, the other one sheltering to the to the home. I don't know if you could tell us a bit. We, we actually think that they work very nicely together. Um, yes. I don't know if you could tell us a bit more about uh, about these small pieces, these two pieces that we chose for, for the program. Well, it's, it's very nice that you chose both of them because back then is... Um... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very happy to know that it, uh, it is being streamed um, in this program uh, because it's it's a, a little piece that I'm, I've never given uh, much consideration, actually. It was a, a little piece that I, I mean, consideration not in, in the way it was made or what it, it uh, meant for me when I made it because it, it was really special to, to make. Um, but it was there like something that, well, that was made for uh, th this group of, of musicians of Seward that uh, actually it's uh, 10 years now that they are playing together. And I have been doing other collaborations with them after that. But in particular, this one was a moment where they invited me to the recording of one of their first um uh, discs, no, and um, it was a three-day immersion in this uh, beautiful uh, house, old house studio, sound studio in the middle of of the countryside, and it was a three-day immersion of of observation uh, from the inside of a band conceiving uh, their pieces. That most of them are pieces that have a big space for improvisation, also. So it was like um, being a testimony of, of an in, uh, moments of inspiration or even very complex moments of, of how uh, negotiation in music can be taken. No? So this was going on and I was actually uh, recording with a video camera, uh, pieces of all that and uh, doing a sort of in-camera editing with the video camera that uh, at the end of, of these sessions, I am, I just put them on the computer one clip after the other one and showed them uh, what what I, I had recorded. It was like at the end of all the, the sessions, and and they were they were amazed. Uh, they they cried <laughs> they, it because it was like a compact you no know, uh, registration documentation of of what was going on there and. I took with me what I had very quickly that was just one uh, Super 8 cartridge uh, in my little Super 8 camera. And in one of the moments of pause of, of this immersion um, that they needed actually to stop because it had become super intense, all the creative process. Um, well, we decided to give that space to silence so I wasn't recording what they were playing, but it was a moment where the group was just in different spaces of the house, 
being silent and the the only sound was the super eight going on no and and i was just filming these little these little you know captures of uh the house and what uh also i felt the house was was um uh not only breathing in that moment but uh sort of showing of a sort of past that was coming in relation to them and then the outside that the outside was a sort of blurry uh world you know it was like uh, the clear world was going on inside them and, and the blurry world was was outside no so that it was all sort of in camera editing then i did a little editing uh afterwards no of uh, of a bit of the uh, speed and and some other things so this piece um takes also uh the sounds uh that were like a bonus track in their uh, lp and um it was like all those really gamey yeah playful moments for them and it was a place a playful moment for me in, in making it also so that's uh, that's what it is it, it's a conjunction of those two things um and in the case of intertropical vision um it's it's a, a lot more structural it has a lot more intention behind it um it was a film that i thought a lot about it when i was filming it um i did a lot of uh uh playing also with the with the object that I used was that was this uh, Olaf Orelianson's uh, viewing machine that is in the middle of Iñachín in Belo Horizonte, um, and so I did a lot of testing with it. And it's this huge kaleidoscope now yeah. in the middle of nature, and uh, so I played a lot with it before I I filmed, and it was having that moment also of playfulness that suddenly got into a sort of trance no it was uh, how the multiple plural um <clears throat> non uh, centric <laughs> uh, uh, observation contemplation and and joyfulness can also take you into sort of trance no? and 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 i was in a moment where i was thinking a lot about um uh, from where we are doing this exercise of observation or acquiring a certain knowledge of what we um, what we look at, you know? and uh, especially in, in, in this first world where there is a lot of uh, uh, the colonialism of uh, of not only not only the vision but uh, what is what it is supposed to be, you no. Know? And so I was thinking a lot about this, also related, of course, to anthropology and the uh, participant observation uh, techniques and uh, and what we are producing from from that. Um, and so it's a piece that we really does depart from um, from the playful uh, uh, starting point, but it develops into something else without being. Um, explicitly an explanation of that or uh, uh or a critic to that but more being sort of invitation no uh into an invitation into and then depending on who is on the other side well it can it can happen in one way or in another no and also i it is a, a piece and I, I work a lot on on the phenomenological uh, aspect of of the, the screening, the projection, and how it is received on the other side. So it, it is different, of course, if it's um, screened in 16. It's a piece that also, it's finished in 16 and with optical sound. And, um, and of course, that experience is pretty different from seeing it on a screen, on a little screen. But well, we do our best now in the middle of all this. <laughs> We were really curious about the the viewing machine by Olafur Eliasson. Yes. Um, and then we discovered that he's a well-known kind of sculpture or environmental sculpture, outdoor sculpture. I, can, I got to see some of his pieces. It's great. Yeah. 
But you mentioned the music in in both films. Um, we had this feeling that the, the music was the the, the, or the way you use uh, the music in your films was the most standard or most yeah standard. I think uh, or we have huge contracts with how experimental is the image in your films. That the, the, the music follows a pattern, almost like a wave bringing you up and down, and the silence and the music again. It's almost like the the, 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 the points of inflection in a standard script to develop the, the, the trajectory of the character. No, but obviously there's no characters. And, this is curious. I know I, I, you, you talk about this curve, not this, uh, uh, but. Uh, for me, it's very curious also to think about it as a standard uh, sort of um, a way of relating to, to music because, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's maybe the the proposal of these two pieces are in, uh, in a sort of, uh, uh, yeah, starting point that then goes into um, um, a how do you say? Trance. No, and you yes. mentioned trance earlier, Adriana. Yeah, it's a very good point. term. It kind of takes you to a trance. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. What I mean, if, if we were uh, on a standard script, you know, there's this obviously a, a, the introduction of the scene, you know, what's going on, a reality, you know, then, yes. then something happens that breaks that reality. And the character obviously is going up and down, struggling to. to arrive in another reality at some yeah. point he seems like he's not gonna manage obviously this doesn't apply to any of your films because they are completely a different realm but the, the music gave me that feeling it gave me that feeling that at some point i was reaching a point that, oh, and then silence and the image keeps going i thought gosh is, this is kind of bringing me to this kind of three part uh, storytelling that the Greeks <laughs> invented 3,000 wow. years ago. Mm -hmm. That's super but, interesting. But I've been known for seeing and hearing things where nobody sees and hears things. <laughs> <laughs> so you it's, have to be right to tell me that. interesting because it's, um, it is a sort of demonstration of, um, well, one of the aspect of, of what one doesn't really know that you can produce <laughs> in the creation of these pieces, but especially in the fact that uh, into tropical vision does search for this, this structure. It is actually internally, it has uh, many chapters you know, that uh, in, the, in the also in camera editing process, uh, I, was, I was working on this structure and the structure is rhythm. You know? The structure is <clears throat> visually a certain rhythm um, and can, how can that take uh, um, the audience or a spectator into uh, already relating to to something that has uh, you know a sort of hilo um, <laughs> conductor and um, and in the case of intertropical <clears throat> vision, I worked uh, with the piece of um, Alfredo Costa Monteiro that I have I worked with him for for a long time. And I really, uh, I really connect with his sound work. He's an, a sound artist. He, actually, he's a multidisciplinary artist, and um, and has been focusing mainly on on sound. And one of the things that I I really like of his work is that he um, he works with uh, vibrations, no, and how um, uh, on this piece and other many pieces. I work with the uh, vibration of light, you know, and how uh, the spectator can uh, sometimes create an image that isn't actually there or that I haven't uh, proposed. <laughs> but in the in the relation with uh, these uh, intermittents or uh, with uh, yeah the the abstractions that are created, uh, the brain can start also creating and that is a singular brain that is creating so each singular brain can create different things uh, that aren't on the screen and alfredo works with that uh, with sound <clears throat> he works with the creation the physical creation of a sound that actually isn't there and departing from all this uh, work with uh, vibrations and also with uh, a live uh, dimension that is uh, especially interesting for me. Um, 
So he's he's he works with electroacoustics, so it's also an analog uh, um, way of uh, creating the sound. And this is uh, these are fragments of uh, Insula that was a concert, a recorded concert that Alfredo uh, made. From that is, uh, I believe it's a piece that its duration is around 40, 45 minutes. Um, so these are fragments from that piece and that are organized into creating this uh, increcendo, no? and uh, that are part of that uh, sort of invitation that doesn't leave you in, in, the, in the top. <laughs> it brings you back. It into, brings you back very nicely. Yeah, so it does, it does go back down. Mm -hmm. And if it is Adriana, um, um, correct me, I can hear a bit of echo. I don't know if you can hear me. I, I, I guess some echo myself. Yeah, no, I, I hear you well. All right. Um, um, just the last question on intertropical. It kind of feels like there's obviously an element of, you know, or nature or a layer where you're making a statement about nature or a question or inviting us into a journey to the nature. But obviously it starts with harmony. Mm -hmm. uh, and sounds of the jungle or nature. Mm -hmm. And it goes to a zenith, we were saying a trance, a zenith, and um, that is rich, you know, with, it feels like more industrial, mechanic mm -hmm. uh, sounds, that, you know, that evolution of sound to get back to silence and harmony and end in that way. I don't know if, he, if you know, if that dichotomy, uh, city, nature, uh, rural, uh, city, nature, uh, mm -hmm. industrial or mechanic uh, was there or is something we just, uh, Came well, I didn't, I didn't um, imagine it as um, industrial or, or mechanic. I think it was more the taking to extremes or to its limits, uh, what can start being like really small, uh, simple um, sounds of nature transformed into or taking into its its limits now and what happens with those limits is that they can actually explode in <laughs> in our ears <laughs> if we are not uh, capable of um, reducing them in in our inside somehow um and of course it is uh it's not a comfortable uh, uh sensation no so it's it is uh it is uh, still linking with the nature because the nature is there and the nature can sort of um talk somehow i i, I don't want to explain too much um because i also want to i, I prefer to leave it a bit open and uh, leave each one also to to have his or her own um connection with it um but nature is of course the center you know? and um how nature can can speak how nature can speak also through uh, that uh, image and that sound um is not always uh in a harmonic mood no so maybe we we're just um wanting nature to be the shoulder all the time where we want to lean on and uh and solve our external and internal problems and maybe nature can can reveal no and and just uh say hey <laughs> this is this is another thing and it's sort of an exploration around that mm -hmm. it sounds fantastic uh, well carrying on with the the, the, the two films we, we already said this uh, there are a small sample of your work and we would like to, to well, ask you about all the other pieces that kind of form Ariana Villas Guevara profile no? like the, you have uh, you are teaching at Bau in Barcelona uh, you're a part you're part of the uh, creator lab uh, I don't know if it's based in Barcelona but it's a creative lab based on uh, film as well that we talk about the dog photography, the video clips, running free processing workshops, making your own films. How, how that, do you make sense of all this to, to, to make one person? <laughs> I don't know. Like we, we're starting to think, Adriana, that Adriana Villa is a department 
of people. It's a department with you know, 20 people. Yeah, I have a crew. I have a big crew. <laughs> it used to be a comic book on that. No? The, 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 there was a soldier that has gone rough, and the, his helmet was one individual, his gun was another individual, his boots was another individual, and they all fight one each other. But you have one character walking lost. And I, I, I don't even for a second imply that that's the case with Adriana. <laughs> but it's just, it, 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 it close the eye. Look, how many things can you do? It's, it's amazing. Well, I, I I would like to do a lot more even. <laughs> I feel time is not enough. Wait one second, I, I, my battery is finishing. So I have to <laughs> one second, the computer. So um, uh, yes, well, it is on one side, it's a, a sort of need to do multiple things um, and that it are constantly inspiring me. You know, all these things that you mentioned are are inspirations and uh, not only, uh, you know, we, we're sometimes involved with things that are actually not engaging us or, or being sort of, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, working on things that, especially people ask me all the time, my student asks me all the time, like, but do you really, are you really able to live uh, like financially, economically, uh, from experimental cinema it's like they 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 don't believe that and um and i i always say yes i even lie a bit and i say that uh, that uh, that absolutely <laughs> and it is true i mean i'm we're very rich so wealthy yeah i'm, I'm super rich just doing all these films eccentric no, I, I, I am rich uh, in in many other ways no because of uh, because of all this and um, I'm happy to be able to share it. So the, the thing for me important is that what connected me with uh, filmmaking and or with finding finally a language is actually the fact that I am constantly engaged with the material, engaged with what I can touch and engaged uh, with um, the, the fact of, of the life Ness, no, of it. So um, I do feel that what I do in, in, in teaching, for example, is a sort of way of, of performing. No, it's, uh, uh, it's sharing something live and uh, with a, a big degree of improvisation uh, a lot of the times, uh, with uh, having the feeling of what's going on in the room uh, connected no, with that uh with that feeling and in in the case of teaching bringing in uh, a lot more of what i'm doing when i do a performance uh that i can't just stop the performance and invite the audience to to get into the projectors no but in teaching i can and um and i learn a lot uh from uh, my students and from those uh, experiences it is um uh a way of of uh, micro politics also somehow no it's a it's a direct uh bridge that i can i can connect with these uh, new generations and also with the workshops i i do um around um it is um it's super exciting just to to see how people come out of these uh workshops uh, excited no <laughs> and uh and um, thankful for being able to practice one moment and, con and knowing that they can continue practicing uh, that kind of, of cinema and uh, film experience. No? And uh, one place that is very important, and I, I will bring it, bring it in here that uh, we talked about, is, uh, is the dark room. No? The dark room for me um, is uh, one of these uh, profound spaces of, uh, of not only developing that is already alchemic and magic and all that, no, um, but also there is there is a lot of things going on in the inside in the dark room, and I can and when I can share that in in a workshop or in, in film school and uh, bring these students into connecting with cinema through 
uh, darkness and not only through light, but um, suddenly putting their hands into uh, into water and, and chemicals and and just handling film in there in complete darkness. And what happens there is that they're not alone. There is a collective dimension of the dark room uh, in a workshop that doesn't happen normally. When I process in here, I am I'm alone normally. No, so it's a it's like a process internal process going on, processing outside and inside. But when um, when I'm teaching, it's a collective process, and that's that's another thing that I really love from teaching and also from performing. No, that. I am connected with uh, with all these other people that are there, um, and um, and it's also uh, sort of it's a micro political moment also when I when I am intending people to have a connection that is uh, really respectful for what they are doing uh, for all the elements that they have because they know that accidentality can have a uh, a very it's it's fatality no it's uh, it's <laughs> it can just ruin completely all the efforts of uh, filming and and there's a little click that happens in there and i notice that when when we come out of the dark room no? um yeah there's uh, all these all these uh what you asked before because i really went out to another place uh, that is the, the poetics of, of all this. I think the poetics go on not only in the filming and in the editing and even in the screening, but in that moment, no, there's a very poetical moment in the dark room. And this is what makes me move into doing all the things that I do. No, it's um, how um, I, I think of, of these uh, projects. I, Yes, I suddenly was participating in, in these video clips. I, I normally don't do video clips, and suddenly I was working with Isaki and, and Silvia and Alva and Rocio, and it was really a, a, an incredible opportunity, um, especially because I had never been a, either a, a <clears throat> cinematographer for somebody else. No, I was always just playing around with my camera, and if it didn't come out well, then it was my problem, no? But suddenly having this huge responsibility uh, was a bit a bit strong, and uh, and it it was incredible. It was incredible. Well, I actually accepted because I I just told Isaki like Isaki, I'm going to be you know doing in camera editing all the time, and <laughs> it's going to be maybe a bit like that. And he was completely with me in that, and that was that was super special. And I learned a lot about, it, I mean, with him, and also from Sylvia and and um, and Alba and uh, and Rocio. That was uh, a departing point, also of a project that I'm working on right now. That is going to be a project that I'm going to do with Rocio, and. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that was on that was on one side, and then all the the other projects no it's i'm working on a new performance and uh, two new performances um and while i'm i'm working at the film schools and and also an eccentric and and it's combining all that right now it can all be a bit combined i don't know later i think one important thing is that we need to well, I need to <laughs> slow it down a bit, but we'll see. Oh, wow, Adriana. So the, our, our theory is tested and corroborated, which is there are 20 Adrianas uh, doing, <laughs> doing the work. No, joking, no, but it's, it's, uh, it's funny. You, you, I mean, all this journey, Adriana, you were touching on something. You know, we, we started talking about how the journey and the path started for you. And, and it sounds and it seems, as we were talking before, that the current moment in in the path the, the, that you're running as a you know anthropologist and a filmmaker is taking to to be interested in more ritual ceremonial communal in the interest of, of those energies in workshops in teaching in performance um, no uh, yeah. it, it's, it's a more basic and 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 and, and important element in, in what you're doing in yeah. video clip teaching in, in all these aspects yes totally well uh, each one of these projects um, 
how I engage with them is is through that sort of uh, ceremony of uh, giving giving a weight to relations and giving a weight to processes, and at the same time taking out all the other weight that normally it has, no, because life already has a lot of weight, <laughs> but it's. Um, it's finding a, a, a different kind of balance. And one thing that is really important for me in this moment is um, how to create spaces um, that can serve as inspiration. Because um, I'm worried about many, many things and, that are going on in the world. <laughs> and uh, I always wake up thinking, well, look, you're you you could be working on on many of these other issues no and actually giving giving light to to many uh, conflicts uh and uh and also yeah sort of uh participating uh, more in, in in a lot of uh active spaces where day by day i think about um in the world and and there was a moment in my life where even if, if I had inside like all these issues, I I noticed that um, I like my my path wasn't so much into uh, inactive criticism that it can be. It will maybe be a lot more than what it has been and that you know, it is, but into uh, trying to open uh, all these little spaces for uh, self consciousness for inspiration. And for activating what is uh, has been uh, even politically <laughs> disactivated, no, and um, and that is mainly all this disgregation, uh, the social um, being separated, being distant, and not only the physical but the social, no, and um, how uh, can cinema uh, go get back into congregation, get back into working? Uh, or stimulating uh, not only the encounter with the film, but the encounter uh, in between the audience and uh, and the film, no? and what the film can provoke in the audience uh, in that establishment of, of relationships, no? and that knowledge of the other, the presence of the other, and also the knowledge of the fact that we are connected and the fact that we are part of a bigger thing that is society you know, and, and getting out of the individuality that is uh, constantly working on, <laughs> on an ego uh, that is uh, in, in competition with and instead of being hand by hand with. You know? So for me, this is one of, one of my, my paths my, where, where I want to work into and, um, and actually one of, uh, one of my pieces is, is getting into uh, the basic elements, connecting also with nature, because nature is, <laughs> for me, is also one of the, the issues and how we relate to nature. So yes, this is, this is one of my main, my main dilemmas and how to uh, bring it in now, maybe still in a bit naive way, I think. Um, but uh, little by little, uh, approaching other uh, more uh, maybe active ways of expressing. We have a massive, Adrian. I think I speak for both. Like you know, in in, in your circles, in your teaching, in 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 your creative process, in celebrating it with people, ourselves sharing films. We 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 can't wait to do it. But there's a healing process that it needs to be done. No, like we, you know, we've been trapped here and and. And whether it's food, uh, cinema, and uh, are useful tools to to do the healing process of re-socializing, relearn um, how to be in a room, how to share energies, experiences with people in a room again, and and within the cinema business, business in the cinema matters, um, and 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 we, <laughs> you in Barcelona ourselves here, but but we're going hard to create those spaces. To you know, to help people to come back to 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 enjoy cinema together. Yes, well, th this is one. This is one space. 
well. So you are actually working on on that, and uh, and uh, I thank you for that. <laughs> With our naive perspective as well, but you know our small acts of audiovisual activism, uh, our little you know spaces to 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 try to help. Um, yeah. Um, and this is just a, a beginning. I mean, we we've, we we have included uh, pieces of experimental film, um, short films, no, in our programs in the past. But uh, it has been a, a long time coming. We wanted to to, to dedicate a, at least one program a month, a year, sorry, to the other cinema, the third cinema, experimental cinema, however you want to call it, no. And I think is is we are all enjoying too much. This <laughs> it's going to develop into something a bit bigger, as you said, trying to mix the watching cinema with making cinema, with teaching cinema, but it will have to wait until 2022 at least. Yeah, uh, with- And you will be the first one of knowing about it. I, I was gonna say, with living cinema, no? Because uh, w w whenever we're allowed, Adriana, um, you know, the under exile, your, your, your work is, is at the very top of our list of things to do, things to share with people, here in a space yes, whenever we can. Sorry, because I thought uh, the Under Exile was a feature, but it, it obviously it's not. It's a performance, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a live performance, yes. And actually what I wanted to say um, from what you were saying, the last thing you were saying is that um, it's also uh, really important that you only not only engage with the, um, creating a space uh, to show a film, uh, but what kind of films you are showing is also uh, the, one of the clues, no? It's uh, the fact that you are um, making this bet for, uh, for experimental cinema and giving a space for exp experimental cinema is, uh, I think it's, it's one of the, also the important um, ways of understanding that this type of cinema can uh, bring or take actually the the audience into other ways of relating and not if we are talking about socializing and uh, reconnecting and uh, uh, even if we want to talk about solidarity you know, and uh, how cinema or spaces where we can get together into watching a film um, what happens with those films that are not only making you think but that are making you feel you no know? and uh, and that are focused on moving certain things in, in the inside. And like poetry, you know, it's uh, uh, what happens um, in the inside of, of who reads uh, poetry, you know. And if that can be shared, uh, those, are, those are spaces for other kinds of communion, you know. And, uh, and for me, that's also one of, one of the important things and how to, uh, through the performing, uh, the film performance, you know, the projection live of film um, can, can be created a, a communal space where uh, other experience, cinematic experiences are, are happening you know? and, uh, and how that connects or creates certain connections or st stimulates other things in, into the audience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and it's always been like like a part. Like you know, um, I don't think like people who traditionally came to to the old school cinematic uh, evenings of short films um, might find only you know a program of films that start, finish, go home. And we've always, in a different way, Adriana, maybe a light way, uh, giving some circus and stand up comedy, um, managed to uh, very aware, being very aware that you know. Um, uh, there are other spaces where people can go, play a movie, watch a movie, go home. We try to create something that, that goes from the social very much. I just hope that we, we we'll have the chance to show you <laughs> what we do here and that you show us what, you, happen, what you do. It will happen, don't worry. <laughs> we'll we make experiment, it happen. We experiment with the audience, new ways to show films. Uh, I, I don't know, we, we seem to have struck a, a chord somewhere and it's, 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 it's doing well. I mean, normal circumstances. We, we get uh, unusual numbers of people to watch foreign films with subtitles, which is, is not happening anywhere else in Scotland, at least. So, yes, we are very proud. I'm, I'm really happy we, we, we managed to, to get you to, to speak with us for, for this interview, for this Bermud. Well, thank you.
<laughs> vermouth without vermouth, no? We're a bit dry all of us. We know yeah, the I have my vermouth in here. No, <laughs> oh, no. But, <laughs> mm, mm, we are missing here. But anyway, it's a real pleasure to, to speak with you. Uh, I recommend everyone to uh, investigate, do your searches and Vimeos in Google and find more materials from Adriana Villa Guevara. And really, uh, we, we tend to say this to our guests, but never as meaning it as strong. Like, I really would like you to present the next film here in Edinburgh with us. Um, and it will happen. It will happen <laughs> one of these days. A film, a performance. Let's, yeah, we're dying to play together, yes. to be able to play uh, and, and be in a room together. So. Whenever it's possible, I'll yeah. just jump in. Yeah. Excellent. With, with that said, uh, we continue with the rest of the remove. I hope you enjoy it. And um, remember, you have still five days to watch the rest of the program. It's online. Or if you are lucky enough to live in the capital of Scotland, Edinburgh, you can watch it in a cinema on it's the gonna 27th be of May. Thursday, 27th is going to be funny, Adriana, also, because you know this experimental program is going to be shown in a very academic set in a oh, Institut sure. Francais. New town building, you know, uh, marble columns, uh, cloud, uh, clear air. Okay. And... We have to infiltrate. That's good. No, they're fantastic. Yes. The NGC yes. in Scotland it's is every fantastic. Space. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank uh, you. Yes. Big pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for doing.